The Atom Mini Extreme is a pretty amazing device, but it does have some limitations. And in this video, I'll show you how you can work around those. And I'll demonstrate some of the benefits you'll achieve by using a Skahoy panel to control your Atom Mini Extreme. Let's get in control. My configuration today consists of an Atom Mini Extreme right here. You probably know all the specs with HDMI in and out and scalers and close to 200 buttons for immediate access to controlling many features in it, but not all of them. And that's why the Crosspoint 24 from Skahoy is the perfect sidekick for the Atom Mini Extreme. We'll go through all the features that we have enhanced or supplemented by the Crosspoint 24. I also brought in a quick pad, one of our really fancy and sexy small controllers here, to just show that as an alternative form factor, you could also go with that one. But it's all the same functionality, which we'll uh, get to later in this demonstration. Apart from the controllers and the switches, we brought in four cameras today, BirdDog P200, Ada PDC camera, new tech PDC camera as well, and finally a POV camera from Ccam, close to our little configuration in the background here. First up on our list is macros, and the Atom Mini Extreme has access to amazing six macros, except from the fact that if you fall in love with macros, which you're likely to do, you need more than six of them, and you also need instant access to your macros from keys, which is what we can do with the Crosspoint 24. So with these six keys here on the Atom Mini Extreme, I have access to the first six macros, and you see them on my screen here. I brought up the macro little uh, pop-up here, so those six would be assigned to the first, but then I made another three macros that I can now control from the Crosspoint 24. Let's try to replay those. So the first one I made was one that selected input two for preview and turned on the audio. The second one I made is one that select input number one and turned off all these audio sources and this one on. So that's an example of what macros can do. Pull together a lot of actions in a single button press. And uh, this one would select a media still to preview um, and um, then the, and what you see in the panel is that these macros will have their titles shown in the displays. So you can see how the labels found in the ATEM switches brought out into the OLED display just above the button. Before we move on, let's just try to create a little macro. So it's like done like this, you, you plus, and then um, we will select, I know I'm doing something that is really redundant by selecting camera number three, right? But let's just do it for the sake of uh, this quick demonstration. I select camera number three, I stop recording. And now if I go to, let's say black for program, and I execute this additional macro that says camera number three here in the display, I press it and you see this camera number three is now brought to program. So that proves the point. We have access to additional macros, as many as you want from the ATEM switcher. I think it supports up to 99. So that is really far away from six to 99, but you can have it with a cross point 24 for the ATEM Mini Extreme. Next up is output. Yes, you have two outputs on the Atom Mini Extreme. You can only control one of those outputs on the Atom Mini Extreme. So what about the second one? Well, you have the software control over here. And uh, there you have access to output one and two very nicely in this software interface. Let's just quickly demonstrate output number one. So if I just browse through these options on the switcher, you see how they select the corresponding sources for that output. That's all fine and so on. By the way, the multi-view selection here is an addition to our ATEM integration we did just recently. So um, just for those of you who might have missed it, it's now possible to select the multi-view source uh, in our integration with the ATEM switcher. But that's another story. The main point is that output number two is unfortunately not available to you on the panel. And um, Anyway, I mean, it, it's, it's really a difficult job to make a single panel without any context coming from this place like we have on, on Skahoy panels. So the fact that Blackmagic Design couldn't cover everything is kind of, um, it's okay. I mean, how, how would you? And even those 200 buttons seems a little daunting and, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you, you get scared easily sometimes when you look at this surface. With the Skahoy panels, you can always pick and choose your functionality and the display will show you what exactly a button does and so on. So that's, that's really nice about these surfaces over here. 
But the selection of that secondary output, also called auxiliary 2, is now done on this row up here. You can see it in the software that as I'm pressing these buttons, I am now doing the same as those buttons did, but for output number 2. So if that's important to you to have control of your second output, you have it in the Crosspoint 24. The next thing to discuss is the use of upstream and downstream keyers, and this device has four upstream keyers and two downstream keyers. That's amazing. I don't know why they made only a button for upstream keyer one and downstream keyer one, so, but they did. And uh, it means that those additional three upstream keyers are not available to you, really. They are kind of hidden in how you can manage picture in picture, though. And uh, for whatever reason, you can also choose uh, sources for Kia number two over here, while you cannot really use Kia two. I think Kia two is used for the picture in picture, but still, it's a little funny. Now, Crosspoint 24 to the rescue, because over here we have access to all of them. But let's just quickly see what those two buttons um, are, are doing. We have Kia uh, one and uh, downstream Kia one active right now, and I turn them off so you can see what we have to expect. On the Crosspoint 24, I can enable all the upstream keyers. I can disable them as well, as you see right here. But in addition, and this is something that is specific Skaho implementation, you're also able to make an auto transition of your upstream keyer. Let me give you an example. Now, see what, what's happening in the software control. When you press this auto key, it's going to bring your key on by a smooth fade not a native feature of the atom switcher actually. So this is a specific Skaho implementation that you also enjoy with the Crosspoint 24. Otherwise, we have just uh, the same for upstream key up to four here. So that whole section on the Crosspoint 24 was set up to that, while this button would be uh, used to manage downstream key number two, as you can see. So that's one thing that we have at, um, in addition made here. The, the way like Magic Design probably thought about the keys is that they're mostly useful for bringing on like a logo, but also to make pictures in pictures. And with uh, four DVEs in this device, which is pretty amazing, you, you can do some really nice configurations. The thing is, if I bring up a side-by-side -side composition here, like I could do right here, you see on my uh, output, I have no way to preview it. So that's a little bit annoying. I would love to see what is it exactly that I am keying on before I'm actually doing it. So previewing my picture in picture. How can I do that? Now with the Skahoy panel, you're able to actually make the same little selection of keys as you have here with some preset locations and sizes of pictures in pictures. And um, we have set up a number of those here for uh, upper left and lower right, and also the side by side you just saw. So if I press this button, notice what happens here on my preview. I get those two up right there. So before I transition them on, I have a chance to see what I'm actually working with. So that's a great thing that is a part of this configuration. By the way, this configuration for the Crosspoint 24 and Atom Mini Extreme is available as a default configuration. So it, it can work out of the box like this. It's just selecting from a drop down list if this is what you want. But you can also be flexible and modify as you go. So that was great being able to use the Crosspoint 24 to create a preview scenario for your picture in picture. I want to move on and then show you what um, we can do for media player select because that's one thing entirely missing here. And if we go to the media tab, you see I have a few nice medias here for background and logos and I don't know what. And uh, being able to assign those to media bank one and two is done by these two buttons right here. So this is assigned to media player one, this is two. And th since this is four way buttons, you can see how by pressing the edges of this button, I can go forth and back in the list of graphics assigned to media player one. And now I can do the same for two down here. So that's also a nice thing to keep in mind. Skahoy controllers in general are capable of controlling many different devices simultaneously. Why? Because you want to integrate control. You want to make it user friendly. Even professionals, they want, they, they are so busy today that they want to have simple interfaces to controlling many different things. It's integrated for them so they don't make mistakes and so on. So it's really widely appreciate it that you can do this, not only for volunteers in your church, but also for high-end producers. And Skahoy Panels does it. So here we have access to our cameras. And with those cameras on the same panel on the final page of this little menu, we can recall presets. So let's just see how that works. I recall preset number three for the bird dog camera, which is my camera number one. Or I can go back to preset number one. So there you see. And even if you watch some of our other videos, you'll know that these four-way buttons 
will allow you to also control pan tilt dimensions of your PTC cameras in a binary way. So you can even make small notching to the position of your cameras. But that's for a different video and day. Second thing we put in is control of the slideshow behind me. How is that done? By the Crosspoint 24 being connected to my computer. So not just the ATA Mini Extreme and four cameras, but also the computer over here where we have an application that we made called Keybridge. And Keybridge essentially makes this um, button press, turns it into a keystroke or even moving your mouse pointer to a specific location and pressing uh, on a button in an application. You can do those things with Keybridge. So that's really handy for controlling computer applications. Now, uh, this is just a slideshow running. So if I press previous slide, you can guess that I would go to the previous slide. If I press next slide, it's going to the next slide. And that is an instruction sent to a computer. So there you go. You have a, a, uh, an example of how a Skahoy controller does all these things um, integrated in a single unit like this. I brought the quick pad and that was because I wanted to make sure you understand that if Crosspoint 24 is not the form factor that fits you, quick pad can do all the same things. And I won't take you through a full demonstration, but um, the way we manage this, since we have here 24 buttons over here, we have only 10 buttons, but we have two encoders is to make the encoders a kind of menu that takes you through the same things. So as an example, you see it's currently in the macro state and it gives you access to the macros that at least uh, I'm pressing this, you see camera one and two is going forth and back. That was what I had on macro seven and eight. So that's on here. And you can also change the bank by turning this encoder over here. Other than that, you have um, like a small menu on the first encoder. Here we have outputs. You can see I'm currently on output number one. And if I am changing that, you see this changes over here. Output number two was the one we did not have access to on the um, ATEM Mini Extreme. So that's now available here, as we have seen. Then we have the keys auto and toggle function for the keys here. And uh, finally, the media tab where I can choose media. That's very easy to see. So if I go here, you can see that this is just direct button presses, selecting media on the quick pad. Over here, we had it on a four-way button with pressing on the sides and so on. Now, all of these things are brought to you by devices that are IP connected. It's powered over Ethernet, single cable, and you can place it anywhere. So instead of having a USB cable and it's tethered to a computer that has to be close by, you can have multiple of these distributed as you want in the context where you want, 100 kilometers away, 100 meters away, or 100 feet away, doesn't matter because these units are IP powered and that's the nature of them. If you're looking at this and think, okay, this is all great. I can choose between these two small sidekicks to the ATEM Mini Extreme. Could I have just a single unit instead of two? And the answer is yes. So take the Airfly Pro as an example. This unit can do all of this in a single surface with a single cable. So that would essentially make you able to push this out in your server room far away from your users and connect the single ethernet cable that will talk to this somewhere else under the table. I don't care, but it will just look cleaner and it might be cleaner in terms of usability. So keep that in mind. We have so many different form factors of controllers and this would be one of them that could actually do all of what you have been looking at today. Thanks for watching this video. And uh, if you follow the links in the description, you can have more information about how you can control your ATEM Mini Extreme. And uh, the configurations I've shown today, they are already um, on these devices as default configuration. So you can just go to our website when you have one of these and then you can pull it down from a list and uh, just press a button and it gets updated. So uh, let us know if you have comments about what we are doing and how you can use your Skyhoy panels and what devices um, you want to control that we may not have support for yet. We are all open ears to, to extend our range of support so that you have even more utility with the devices. So uh, thanks for doing that. And uh, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe, give us a like, and uh, otherwise, have a nice day.